Welcome to the Maryland Mortgage Rate Weekly Mortgage Market Update for the week of April 13, 2014, 2015. Sorry. Hello, I'm John Thomas with Primary Residential Mortgage here to give you an update. Well, last week was good for Maryland mortgage rates. They still remained around record lows. Take a look at the bond chart on the screen. Uh, mortgage bonds have been stuck in this trading channel for over a week now. You see the blue lines at the top and the bottom. The top is the resistance capping bonds moving any higher, and the bottom is a floor of support keeping bonds from selling off. Now, they're going to break out of this channel. We're hoping they break higher, which would move mortgage interest rates lower. If you look at Friday, there's a green candle there. That means it rallied on Friday after off of support, so we're looking for the bonds that can continue to rally this week. So we're going to recommend floating your Maryland mortgage rate to start the week to see if bonds can move higher and break out of this trend channel. Now if they switch and break below that floor of support, we would switch to a locking stance because they could sell off. Now if you look at the next bond chart, that's a two-year trend there. You see that blue line, that means mortgage bonds over the last two years have been on a trend higher. So that's a strong long-term trend. So we are looking for mortgage interest rates to remain low throughout the year, maybe even move a leg lower as we um, stay on that long-term trend line. Now, if bonds were to break below that blue line and stay there, that would be bad news. That would mean they would sell off and we would switch to a long-term lower trend, which is higher interest rates. So good news is we're still well above that blue line. Very good, strong two-year trend here for interest rates to stay low throughout the year. Now, if we dig into the economic news, the big report was April 3rd. The March jobs report was released, and it was a stinker. Only 126,000 jobs created for March, well below the 250,000 expected. Um, so, and then they also revised January and February lower by 69,000 jobs. Um, so, very bad jobs report. Now, unemployment did stay the same at 5.5%. But the labor force participation rate dropped from 62.8% to 62.7%, which is what we would expect if the jobs numbers dropped. Um, so very bad jobs report, and that le leads people to believe that the feds will not raise the fed funds rate in June as previously thought. And on Wednesday, we kind of got a confirmation that the feds released the meetings of their uh, the minutes from their March meeting, and basically they said that um, they're going to be data dependent before they raise the Fed funds rate. Well, the data stinks, so they're not raising the Fed funds rate in June. So earliest we're looking at is maybe September, probably the end of the year, if even that. Um, Thursday, we saw the release of the weekly initial jobless claims. It did go, uh, move higher to 281,000 claims, but that the previous week at 267,000 claims was a 15-year low. So even though it did move higher, 281,000 is still well below 300,000, which is a bad number. So still a good, solid weekly initial jobless claims. Now, in housing news, CoreLogic reported its home price index for February, and it was up 1.1% from January and 5.6% year over year. So very strong report on housing, very sustainable number year over year. Um, it's predicting about 5 to 5.5% appreciation in 2015. So um, the big driver for housing right now is we have a shortage of inventory. There's not a lot of homes for sale, so the competition is hot. Uh, as we go into the spring market, it's going to be even tougher for buyers. So buyers need to be willing to go with their highest and best offer because if they don't, they may not even get a chance for a second bid. So that's the market we're in. It is a seller's market, but it's good for home price appreciation. Um, and then we saw vacation home sales. At 1.13 million vacation homes sold last year, that's 21% of the market. That's up 57% from 2013. So that's hot market, and it's being driven by the baby boomers looking to buy retirement homes and vacation homes. Um, but owner-occupied homes still made up 6% of the market at 3.23 million homes sold. So great housing reports coming out. In the local news, USDA Rural Housing is underwriting files submitted on March 30th. That was as of April uh, 10th, which was Friday. So it's about a 10-day lag to, on the end of your closing. So when, if you're doing a USDA loan, when you make your offer, add 10 days to it to allow time for USDA to review your file. And then in the local news, the next First Time Home Buyer Seminar is April 25th. That's in Towson, Maryland from 10 a.m. to noon. You can register for that event by giving us a call at 410-412-3319 or online www.marylandhomebuyerseminars.com. Look forward to seeing you guys next week.